Uh, and, and Mr. President, I rise today to speak about a recently introduced bill regarding the future of Puerto Rico's political status. Known as the Puerto Rico Status Resolution Act, this legislation would call for an up or down resolution on Puerto Rican statehood, including the option of Puerto Rico's current status of ex excluding, excluding the opposition of Puerto Rico's current status of commonwealth. Um, the President of Congress would have to proceed with the legislation if statehood receives a majority of votes. Um, Mr. President, I support Puerto Rico's right to self-determination. This is an issue that I have closely followed and been involved in for the better part of two decades. Um, concern about the way we do uh, statehood determination uh, votes in Puerto Rico uh, is an issue that has crossed party lines here in the Congress. Um, and, and I would say to my colleagues, Congress needs to make sure at a minimum that any process used to measure the intent of Puerto Rican voters is objective. Otherwise, the outcome will be neither fair nor a meaningful test of public opinion. And that's why it's so important not to exclude the option of the current Commonwealth status. The Status Resolution Act does not rise to the threshold of uh, fairness or a meaningful test of public opinion. Uh, there are two reasons for this, Mr. President. First, the legislation has already been enacted. Uh, there is legislation already enacted for a plebiscite on Puerto Rico's political status. The 2014 omnibus already includes funding for a plebiscite that would include all available options for political status. Allowing Puerto Ricans the opportunity to choose a status besides statehood is in keeping with a recommendation from the White House Task Force released in 2011. Secondly, the referendum proposed by the Status Resolution Act would have the same shortcomings as the plebiscite held on November 6, 2012. The results of that referendum were widely criticized as well as was the tortured ballot designed by the pro party. Of the 1.9 million Puerto Ricans who participated in the referendum, only 834,191, or about 44 percent, favored statehood. Only 44 percent favored statehood, Mr. President. Close to half a million voters declined to respond to the second question on the ballot, evidencing their dissatisfaction with the choices offered. We need to offer better choices. The percentage of statehood supporters has not changed significantly for the past 20 years and certainly does not serve as an impetus for Congress to entertain yet another admissions process now. Elsewhere on the November 6 ballot that I referred to, public support was clear for the pro Commonwealth Popular Democratic Party. And the election of pro-Commonwealth and anti-statehood candidate Alejandro Garcia Padilla as Puerto Rico's new governor. In fact, the Commonwealth's legislature uh, as a result of that election is now controlled by the pro-Commonwealth party as is the mayorship of San Juan, the capital of the Commonwealth. Statehood advocates may attempt to manipulate ballots and election results to support their preferred outcome, but they do so at the expense of, democratic, of the democratic process and the right of every Puerto Rican to have a say in the island's political future. The referendum process should be conducted in a fair and transparent manner that reflects the true will of the people. In the past, I have introduced legislation that would recognize Puerto Rico's right to convene a constitutional convention, a process that could help build consensus rather than advance the exclusive agenda of one
political party over the other. For Commonwealth supporters, Puerto Rico's current status is instrumental to preserving the island's rich heritage and maintaining the authority needed to address specific needs. The Status Resolution Act not only has the potential to trample on people's rights, but it also distracts from the island's pressing economic and security concerns. In conclusion, Congress and the Obama administration should continue to strengthen the partnership between Puerto Rico and the United States in constructive ways, instead of encouraging a short-sighted and flawed referendum. Puerto Rico faces economic energy and public safety challenges that have a direct impact on the quality of life of its residents. Joint efforts to restore economic growth, modernize energy resources, and reinforce strategies for combating drug trafficking could have a big impact. I am encouraged by proposed reforms, and I wish the best to Governor Garcia Padilla in, uh, in the early days of his term in office. Mr. President, I hope the Senate will not attempt to impose a solution from Washington, D.C. on Puerto Rican voters, a solution that would be contrary to the public opinion of inhabitants of the island. Now, I'm glad to be joined today, and I, I will soon yield the floor, uh, to my colleague from West Virginia, who serves on the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, which exercises jurisdiction over matters relating to Puerto Rico. And I would now yield the floor to my colleague, Senator Manchin, and ask him to uh, comment on, uh, on a recent study by the GAO on Puerto Rico's economy and the potential effects of statehood. And I yield the floor to my colleague. Mr. President. Senator from West Virginia. Thank you very much. I want to thank my colleague, Senator Wicker, uh, for his concern and long concern about uh, Puerto Rico status and how they can govern themselves and work independently. Uh, and as you can tell, this is a bipartisan concern that we have here working very closely together. And as you mentioned, uh, uh, Senator Wicker, the Government Accountability Office is currently working on a report that examines Puerto Rico's economy and the cost of admitting Puerto Rico as a state. And I look forward to seeing the results of that report. Uh, Mr. President, in light of the fact that we still await the GAO report, in addition to a number of other reasons, I share Senator Wicker's concerns about the Puerto Rico Status Act. Uh, on August 1st of last year, the Energy and Natural Resource Committee, which has jurisdiction over Puerto Rico issues, held a hearing on the political status of Puerto Rico, where we had the opportunity to hear from Governor Padilla, Commissioner Perluisi, the president of the Puerto Rican Independence Party, Ruben Berrios, and I appreciate their willingness to openly discuss the ongoing status debate in Puerto Rico and their work with the committee members on how to move forward. Like Senator Wicker, I support Puerto Rico's right to self-determination. However, I have voiced my concerns that the 2012 plebiscite did not meet our democratic standards of fairness and exclusivity. And more than 470,000 Puerto Ricans who left the ballots second question blank would seem to share my concerns also. We need a process with the support of all Puerto Ricans regardless of their beliefs and political status. Supporters of statehood argue about the constitutionality of different status options. Crafting a plebiscite, however, which excludes all options except statehood, as the Puerto Rico status resolution does, is not the solution. Is not the solution. The 2014 omnibus includes funding for a plebiscite that would be proctored by the Department of Justice, who can authoritatively decide on the constitutionality of all possible status options. Further, both those who are pro-Commonwealth and those who are pro-statehood have expressed support for this process. This is not true of the 2012 
plebiscite nor the Puerto Rico status resolution. Politically, status is not the only issue facing Puerto Rico. The Commonwealth has faced more than half a decade of economic recession and high unemployment, as well as exceptionally high utility costs and continued obstacles to economic development. As a former governor, I have great respect for Governor Padilla and the challenges he is up against, unlike many of our own states in our country. In meeting with him, I have had the opportunity to hear directly about the enormous economic difficulties he has tackled in his short time as governor. In my understanding, the 2014 budget, his 2014 budget of Puerto Rico would significantly reduce the Commonwealth projected deficit. General fund expenses were down by nearly $200 million during the second half of last year, and expected revenue is up. The governor has made these efforts with the goal of having a balanced budget by 2015, something we could all work towards. A goal that I applaud, as you know, and I understand and, and have seen progress is being made. The Senate should do everything that we can to encourage economic development across our country, including in the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. We need to work as partners in the confronting and confronting his high energy costs, double-digit unemployment, and continuing recession. As we support self-determination, we should ensure that our focus on political status does not prevent us from addressing the immediate economic needs of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. I want to thank you for the time to speak and join my colleague on this important issue. And uh, Senator Wicker, I look uh, forward for your support of a fair and open process and looking forward to working with you on this. Mr. President, if I might. Senator from Mississippi. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me congratulate my colleague from West Virginia on his remarks. And in closing, uh, make three observations. Despite the economic hardships of, of the region, the economy of, of Puerto Rico is the strongest of any uh, of any of our Car of the Caribbean islands, and this has occurred um, under Commonwealth status. The special relationship that Puerto Ricans have with the United States, as United States citizens, but with their separate identity on the island. Uh, secondly, I would point out that some of the most vocal pro-Commonwealth voices in this Congress are, are uh, Puerto Rican Americans who happen to have been elected to the United States Congress uh, from, uh, from the states. And they speak also and have spoken also with authority uh, in favor of the, the Commonwealth concept, but also in favor of a, of a fair and accurate election. And then just to drive home a point that Senator Manchin and I have, uh, have made. On election day in 2012, 1.9 million Puerto Ricans showed up to vote. In that election, the pro-Commonwealth candidate for governor was elected, the pro-Commonwealth candidate for mayor of San Juan was elected, and a majority of the legislature of, of the island uh, that day uh, turned out to be pro-Commonwealth. And as flawed as the plebiscite was, the fact remains that of the 1.9 million American citizens in Puerto Rico who voted, who showed up to vote, only 44 percent of them cast a ballot in favor of statehood. That is, that is a figure that cannot be uh, uh, um, controverted. 1.9 million people showed up to vote, American citizens in Puerto Rico and only 44% of them check the box for statehood. So as we go forward and as we implement the provisions of the Omnibus Act, let's make sure that whatever we do, we have the facts as um, Senator Manchin has pointed out. And also we have a process to accurately 
reflect the will of the Puerto Rican people. And uh, I thank you, Mr. President.